possibly can. And that grounding comes from people in my life that have meant something to me. I've had some great mentors, um, great uh, business people, uh, friends, um, and a minister friend of mine that uh, really shaped who I am. But I got to tell you, early on, I accepted the Lord Jesus into my heart when I was 16 years old. And that really gave me a lot of hope for life to live, uh, to live with purpose, not to just wake up in the morning and just be mundane. You know, how some people say, you know, you ask them how their day is and there's just, it's another day, another day, another dollar, you know, they're kind of like Eeyore. Not everybody's wired the same. So I'm not down on you. If that's, that's you, not everybody can be the same. And I don't expect people to be that way, but I don't know any different. Now, when I'm not feeling good, I'm a big wimp. I don't like being sick. I complain. I even complain on the air. I even talk about it. Uh, but I'm transparent about, you know, what's going on here, even to a fault uh, with this broadcast in particular when it comes to our needs. Some people say you're just way too transparent to, to say that you're on a shoestring. Uh, it sounds small. It sounds weak, but it's true. I, I I can't lie. Uh, people say fake it till you make it. I can't. I mean, it, you know, either either it's gonna make it, it's or it's not gonna make it. And I'm just a person of faith that that uh, you have to um, you have to continue regardless. Yeah, just like the the folks in Texas, uh, folks in Puerto Rico, and the islands, is you have to you have to stand up and say, okay, what can we do? Uh, right now, and a lot of people are in that uh, that rebuilding phase right now, where they're like, "Okay, let's make some sense out of the chaos." And it kind of just sounds like our broadcast is uh, in the midst of all of this. We try to be some 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 clarity, uh, reassure. We try to be reassuring, uh, comforting, um, but we take you through this journey that we're all going through. This thing called life. If you listen to our jingle that kicks off the program, you should listen to it. But we're all there together, and for the people is for you. I want you to feel a part of this broadcast. I know that I can't do it without you. And for the handful of supporters, um, maybe a little bit more than that now, that uh, have given something, uh, we just got a $10 donation uh, that's a monthly supporter, uh, I get excited. Is that weird? $10 that comes in? monthly uh, i get excited about it i really do i i say here is somebody that um loves what we do uh supports what we do and uh, let me open up the email brian stanley i know he's like don't do it but monthly he supports it and it it just it makes it worthwhile and a lot of these people that support us, they're, they're pulling the weight of everybody else. They could just do minimal a dollar, but he fills in the gap and says, okay, I'm going to give nine extra dollars. I mean, you can give 10, 25, you can give up to a hundred dollars and that's great. Thank you. That would pay for the internet. You know, it's 80, $90 a month there. Uh, I've one supporter that does that. Thank you. There's, there's our internet plus tax. That's awesome. That gets our signal out uh, to feed the network. Uh, but we just uh, have money to, to pay our bills. And then when we have an initiatives, we tell you about it, what we're doing with the money, because that's what you're supposed to do if your listeners support it. So we're putting it out there. And we have this ad idea that uh, a very smart guy for the NAB said, and we've been thinking about these things too, but he gave us the right magazine and the, the right month to run it, where it's going to go, and where it's mostly going to be seen by decision makers of radio stations across the country. But the full page ad is like an expensive ad. And, you know, things ain't cheap. And we just are, you know, I put my own money, my own time, my own effort in. And that's why Shareathon is why we kicked it off for the very first time in three years. We've never done anything all out. We've don't misconstrued, you know, other campaigns. We've raised money for Chuck. Chuck is in a nursing home. Chuck was the former host of the broadcast. We all love him, but this is for this broadcast, not for Chuck. This is for, for the people now. 
And I have a lot of past supporters that love Chuck that have gone on board and said, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to bankroll this as much as I can, whether it's a dollar a month or twenty five dollars a month or a one time donation of whatever. Um, I'm going to get on board because you're furthering the legacy. And what an honor. And really, you think about a testament for somebody that started something and was so successful decades and decades of his life of service. And then where it comes to the latter part of his life where he can't broadcast any longer because of health, that he asks somebody to stand in and, 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 and to take over the broadcast. It's not exactly the same. Uh, you don't expect that. Uh, it's kind of weird for me to watch Tucker Carlson on television where Bill O'Reilly used to be. But I watch Tucker. I like him and I've learned to like him. I've learned to see that he's a different person, but he's intelligent, insightful. He's just just a little different, but he's personable, he's passionate, he's intelligent, and these are good things. And passion is a beautiful thing. Uh, I think you should be. Um, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, um, it'll show. And everybody else around you will hear it, will see it, and I always tell people to share it because it's kind of contagious. You know, and I want this, I want this to catch on. And I am imploring you, please do something today. If it's just a small donation, you can't, you can't get the raffle ticket for $25. Uh, just give something and whatever that might be at forthepeopleshow.com. Show me some love, if you would. I show you love every day. Show me some love. I feel like Jerry Maguire, show me the money. <laughs> Ah, good stuff. Forthepeopleshow.com is where you can make a donation right now, securely online. And this will help us to our goal of $5,000. Do what you can. That's all I'm asking. And I really appreciate that. Apple CEO says, and I can't believe he's saying this. Well, I can believe it, but let's just hear what he says. Let's have an open mind. We've been hearing about the DACA, the Dreamers, and all of this. The CEO of Apple says that he wants more illegal immigrants to come to the U.S., more illegals to come illegally. I'm not even kidding. Apple CEO Tim Cook said that he was shocked that there was even a debate about giving amnesty to the Dreamer, illegal aliens who were brought into the country as children. Apple CEO Tim Cook said in an interview that it was inhumane to deny amnesty to those who were brought into the country illegally. Oh, excuse me, as children. I think it's the biggest issue of our time, he said. And uh, when asked about illegal immigrants, because this goes to the values of being American. This is, this is, uh, are we human, he said? <laughs> are we human? Are you human? He goes on with the interview. And basically, he's pontificating about how many of these smart individuals, as he puts them, have benefited the Apple Corporation. Uh, it serves him economically. Oh, I'm sure it has. It's made him rather wealthy, don't you think? But, folks, every country has rules and regulations, and you don't just walk into any country. And we should not have a policy that allows people to do what they want to do when they want to do it with no repercussions whatsoever. The problem is, is that we've had politicians and presidents that simply just have not reinforced it. And when you have governors that offer sanctuary cities to illegals, we're not talking the little children. We're talking about mom and dads, not even mom and dad. They just come in and they want everything given to them. It really uh, frustrates me it is, it, when you hear of people that come in the right way and then citizenship um, – it means much more in so many different ways.
I mean, I'm not saying there's no illegals out there that being in America doesn't mean anything to them. I'm not saying that. It's just it, there's a an appreciation because people have been on waiting lists for so long to get here. And then they finally get here, and then they hear about those that just are proud to be illegals and have no intentions of really becoming legal. Now, you say, well, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to give them amnesty so they can be legal, so they can do it the right way. Should we continue on doing that? Because, oh, just the people that are here. That's not what Apple CEO says. He is wanting more illegal immigrants to come into the U.S. More illegally, not legally, not doing it the right way. He is no better than de Blasio of New York that is offering sanctuary cities to illegals. No matter how many crimes, sex crimes or drug crimes or murders or whatever, they're shielding these folks. I know now that they're going to get some email saying you're just like Trump saying that all, you know, suppose are rapists and killers and, and, and all the illegals are, are that way. They're not all that way. I understand that. But doesn't anybody hear the language that's being used? Illegals. Try to get in to Saudi Arabia. Just walk into the border. Try it. Try to walk into Israel. Even Afghanistan, try to walk in as crazy as that would be to want to go in. Try to just walk over the border. It doesn't happen. Try to even do it to Mexico. Do you know it's difficult to get into Mexico? You actually have to pay more or less to become a citizen of Mexico. You actually have to have money in your account. They don't want deadbeats. But it's okay to come uh, come from Mexico into the Ameri- uh, the United States uh, illegally and get all the benefits and all the great things because Mexico does not want to pay for it. And it's no wonder they don't want to pay for the wall because it's good for them. Do you understand this? And it's good for Apple CEO to ask for more illegals to come because it benefits him. Now, I will say this, and I've said this before on the radio show. From people that come from different places, could be from Turkey, could be from, from Malaysia, could be from China, wherever. But there is this hunger uh, that I have found in folks that come over here and see something that so many people just don't see is the amazing opportunities that are available. And they use it. They better themselves. They educate themselves, yes, at our expense. And then they bring other people over and so forth and so on. I'm not a hater of folks that want to do better for themselves and do well. I have a hard time, I guess, supporting all of those that don't do anything for themselves. Um, there was a term that, I don't know if it's a you know, 50s term, 60s term, but freeloader, you've heard of that. It's people that uh, uh, that don't do anything to uh, to contribute. And it's a burden, a tax burden. Uh, but so many Dems have just ignored all of it, and uh, but like it, and have been able to seem to cozy up to these illegals to make it their cause because it benefits them, and as they get the vote, it's known as paid voters. Everybody knows that, right? Most people should. The problem is a lot of these immigrants, they don't. Or illegals, they don't realize they're being taken advantage of. And I guess they just don't care. They don't care. And I really don't think that the Apple CEO could care less of making millions of dollars a year because it doesn't affect him. Uh, he just wants the best of the best. 
Now, I, I, I wonder about this, uh, of where he is in the great scheme of reality here, because we really try to live. 